Hello and welcome to Aspects of Writing. I'm your host, James Kelly, and my co-host for today's show is Janet Corsi. Our guest is Paul Joseph, and Paul, also, there's, is there another part of your name? Uh, my last name is Franzak. Franzak, okay. Yes. I always know you as Paul Joseph. So, Anyway, and the topic of the show is writing a true story. And we're going to start off with, I'm going to let Paul tell us a little about who you are and how we got to this point and why we're interviewing you today. So you want to know the story or how you and I met? Well, yeah, let's talk about who you are first. Okay, so my mom and dad had a baby in Chicago in 1964, uh, Michael Reese Hospital. Someone came in, dressed like a nurse, told my mom the doctor had to see the baby, took the baby, and vanished. And that baby was gone without a trace. Okay. And you, this is a true story. And the reason we're talking about it differently, it's not a biography necessarily, because you're still trying to find out a few things, or have you some secrets that we don't know about yet? Uh, right now, it's still a work in progress, but we have some really good tips that we're running down. Okay, and what is the book you wrote? So the book is called The Foundling, and it's basically my search, my journey, to find out what happened to my parents' kidnapped child and to find out who I really was. Because your parents, for the longest time, thought you were the child they found how many years later? Correct. Yeah, Paul was taken in 1964, and they actually got me from the FBI in 1966. Okay. 1967, actually. And they thought they found their missing child. Right, the whole world did. And you were raised as their missing child. I was was raised as Paul. Yeah. And then when did you find out that you weren't Paul? In 2015. So recently. Well, actually, I found out that I wasn't Paul in 2012, but I didn't find out my real identity in 2000, until 2015. So you now know your real identity. I do. And do you f- have a sib- sibling? I have a lot of siblings. You do? I do. Oh. Yes. Um, I, have, I had two older sisters. One has passed away. I have a younger brother. And the saddest part was I had a twin sister. My name was Jack and her name was Jill. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my and heavens. She went missing just like I did. So I'm, um, so I, I started out trying to solve two mysteries, and I still have two mysteries to go. Okay. So tell us the journey from what, your, from what your parents went through, because I can only imagine how this has to impact them. Think about this. First of all, they think you are their son that they had, that was kidnapped. And now they have to deal with the reality of the fact that not only are you not their son, but they have to be wondering what did happen to their son. Right. So when this first came out, it was really hard for me to tell my parents because my my thought was that they gave me the greatest gift. They they saved my life, literally. You were their child. I was their child. And once I found out who I was, they really saved my life because the alternative of how I ended up could have been a lot grim, yeah. a lot more grim. Right. Um, so I thought that once I found out I wasn't Paul, I would just find Paul very quickly, uh-huh. and then show up and say, thank you for everything, here's your real son. And it didn't turn out that like that at all. It took a long time to find out who I was, and we're still in the process of finding Paul. But also, it would be hard for your parents to grasp the fact that when you just said, now here's the real Paul, to them you've been their son yeah, your entire you life. So that has to be so hard for them to understand. First of all, they would still love you because you are their son. Regardless of what happened, they raised you as their son. And then to realize, but what did happen to our son? I mean, I can't even imagine what that would be like for them. I know what it's like. It has to be for you. But even for them, it has to even more, be more devastating. To- well, it was, it was really hard because my, um, my, my father was, was sick, and he passed away last August. Oh, sorry. Yeah. But um, when this started, I wanted to find Paul for them. Okay. And then if I found out who I was, it would be a bonus. It wasn't wasn't the the main point of my journey. I just wanted to find Paul. They took it the wrong way. They took it like I wanted to find better parents. I wasn't happy with the way they raised me. And that couldn't be further from the truth. Right. So we didn't speak for over a year. Oh. And it, it was it was a real strain on the relationship. But I was I was on a journey and I couldn't live a lie. If you know you're not who they think you are, then you need to find out who you really are. And I wanted to find Paul. Right. And it's it's really the same thing as when it comes to adoptions. Um, I grew up with someone who she wasn't told she was adopted until she was 16. And what's interesting about that scenario was is that her whole life, 
she thought this was her parents, and she loved them as her parents. And of course, her parents, who knew she was adopted, loved her as their daughter. But upon finding out that she was adopted, it devastated her. And it's interesting to me how you can go from having loving parents to all of a sudden seeing them differently. Not that you saw your parents differently, but what I'm saying is that she saw them as different. And her life became chaotic from that point forward, of her own doing, really, because she didn't look at them as her real parents. But they were her real parents, just like the people who raised you were your real parents. Even though they weren't your your blood parents, they were your parents. And I know that's kind of difficult, and that's kind of why I want to talk about the difference between what you've written as opposed to a biography. Because yours is a journey, and it's still a journey, it sounds like, because you're now trying to find Paul for your mother who's still living. Um, so what do you think is your next part of this journey? Okay, so we're in the process of finding the real Paul and okay. also my twin sister, Jill. Oh, so you haven't met your real sister yet? No, um, she, she vanished. Oh, at my the, goodness. At the same so time? Jill was missing. What we really think um, from talking to you know, my real family that I've met, that uh, something bad happened to my sister. I think they accidentally maybe murdered her and that's why they got rid of me because they couldn't explain one twin hanging around the house all right so you now know who your real parents were yes how did you come up missing from them i was abandoned they abandoned you yes okay and your sister well that's that's the the mystery okay i don't think they abandoned her i think something bad happened to her okay that's why they abandoned me because they had i had two older sisters any younger brother. Okay. So why would you just get rid of the twins but keep everybody else? Why uh -huh. did they abandon you? So the, this, this, from, what I've, from what I've concluded from talking to my, my biological family, cousins and the people that actually saw the twins, mm -hmm. is that my sister was, was weaker. We were, we were twins. Okay. And they, you know, development was a little slower. So they kind of thought that uh, maybe she was uh, you know, not up to speed. They kept us in cages. Oh, my God. In, in a dark room in the house. And um, uh, the stories that we heard, uh, it, it's in my book. It, it gets a lot darker than this. But uh, we were definitely mistreated. Okay. And I think something happened to my, my sister, either on accident. And, um, you know, I, that's, why, that's why I have some graves to dig. Uh, I think that she might have been buried on the property of my, where my aunt and my grandma used to live. So we're in the process of doing all that. So it, it's, it's pretty dark. You know, it's a roller coaster. So um, how did you get to the point to where someone found you and they thought you were Paul when they found you in, in New Jersey? All right, so I was abandoned outside of McCrory's Variety Store. It was, Who abandoned you? We don't know yet. Really? Yeah, I was in a new stroller in a new blue suit. Okay. And I was sick, and I was I was bruised up like I was I was beaten. And uh, I was outside of the store for quite a few hours before someone dropped a dime and said there was an abandoned baby outside the store. But it was the hottest store in New Jersey at that time. It was so busy that they actually had a new uh, a, a subway platform inside the store. So people from Manhattan and all, and all the areas around could go into that store. Wouldn't there have been security cameras to see who dropped you off? This is 1965. Yeah. Oh, okay. No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That would have been a lot easier, wouldn't it? Yeah. But then we wouldn't have a book. <laughs> <laughs> well, this isn't just about a book. I mean, it is yeah. about your book, but at the same time, you know, it is an interesting story. And I know having lived it, you know, there had to be a lot of things that went through your mind. When did you find out that you, well, you always thought you were Paul? So you never thought you were adopted? No. I, so when I was 10 years old, I was snooping around my parents' house looking for Christmas presents, mm -hmm. uh -huh. like most kids yeah, do. Yeah, like kids do. So I went in the, in the crawl space, and I, I found a bunch of boxes, and I thought, this is it, the big score, right? I'm going to find the presents before, you know, before right. Christmas. Yeah. I don't, no ideas. Okay. Yeah, now your daughter's here. Who's, and yeah. introduce your daughter. This is my daughter, Emma Faith, and she's here for support and, you know, to give me the, keep me humble. So, Emma, what do you think about all this? What's it been like for you? What's the experience been like for you with your dad trying to find out his identity? Um. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. Do, yep. do you try to help him? Do you read stuff for him and, and try to put clues together? Maybe. Maybe? <laughs> uh -huh. Are you interested in this story? Yes. This is very fascinating, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. So what's it been like for you living this journey with your dad? I know you go to school. So do does anyone talk about it? Because I know your dad's been on the news a lot. I mean, sometimes. Yeah. 
Okay. All right, so Paul, you, when your parents found you, and they thought you were their son, they did not know until 2015 or 2012, really, you said. Um, how did they take that? Okay, so basically what happened was I was, I was abandoned in Newark, New Jersey. Mm-hmm. I was placed in the system. I was given a new name. I was baptized. I was living with a family for over a year. So you were in foster care. I was in foster care. Okay. And the foster family, I actually got to meet the daughter of the family that was there, and she remembered me and everything. And uh, they liked me a lot. They wanted to actually adopt me themselves. Okay. And then one day the FBI showed up and said, that's the kidnapped child from Chicago. Why did they think you were the kidnapped child from Chicago? Because you were in New Jersey. Based on the shape of my ear. Oh, my heavens. That's all they had. Because the hospital that Paul was born in, Michael Reese Hospital, they never did a blood type. They never took his footprints like they do usually. Right. They, right. Do, they didn't do any of those things. Is it because they didn't have time when... Well, Paul was there for oh, like a day and a half. So, yeah, they, But they he was kidnapped have. from the hospital. He was, yeah. Right. So yeah. Uh, huh, that's interesting. They usually do the footprints and stuff. Immediately. Yeah. Yeah. Someone slipped up there. Did someone slip up there or do you think that maybe someone on the staff maybe took the child? Well, that's a good question. Uh, they, the FBI did a thorough background on all the employees that worked there. Uh-huh. And the lady dressed like a nurse... Even though she had a very a very good knowledge of the hospital, she wasn't she wasn't staff on the hospital, mm-hmm. but she had a nurse's uniform. She was able to walk in. She was there for two days checking out different babies. Decided on Paul, went back and then took Paul. But do they know who that person was? No, they never caught her. Huh. Could she have been maybe a, a nurse at another hospital or had been at a hospital and worked that particular type of? Of job and would know even to pull the card, the birth record, so that's that a, there would not question. be. Yeah, um, I'm sure the FBI did all those things. Unfortunately, I, I have when I started all this, it, it was a it was a closed case. Right. But when all the uh, when all the hoopla started again, the FBI reopened the case, therefore shutting me out of any access to any records. Oh, because once they're involved, then you can't. Right. Exactly. Yeah. And when it, when it came out that I wasn't Paul. Mm-hmm. I really don't have any access because I'm not even a Franzac. Right. Oh, my God. <laughs> this yeah. is going to be so confusing oh. for you, too. Right. Like, who am That's I? That's like, yeah. uh, in, in order to, you, you open one door to, to get information and then 15 of them close on you. Exactly. Exactly. So I just tried harder. All right. So now you found out who you are. Um, what about the people who are your parents? You don't know where they are, though, or you do know where they are. My biological parents. Biological. biological parents. Yes, they're both passed away. They're both passed oh. away. But I was, I was able to go and visit their graves. Okay. But you learned a little bit about their past. A lot of it. Which was kind of dark. Right. Which is in your book. Yes. Okay. Um, and so what about the brothers and sisters that you thought, or that you do have, the biological? Have you spoken to them recently? or? So the oldest sister passed away. Right. The, the next sister I was able to meet. I spent some time with her. Okay. And uh, I got to know her a little bit uh-huh. and um, share some stories. Uh-huh. And the younger brother refuses to talk to me. And the reason for that? He thinks it's a scam, doesn't want anything to do with it. He thinks it's a scam that you are claiming to be their biological brother. Correct. Okay. And what would be his reason for that? I would say being raised by the parents that raised him because of all the stories that I've heard. So he probably lived through some of the trauma that you're talking about. All of it, because he was the youngest. Okay. Yeah. Huh. And so, but DNA test was done. DNA test. I, I am Jack Rosenthal. Okay. Without with, a doubt. Without a doubt. Okay. Wow. N- not related to the Rosenthal of Las Vegas. You mean uh, from uh, Goodfellas? Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know. Really interesting. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, and where are they? Where is this family? Are, they're not in Las Vegas. No, uh, I have a... They're um, in Chicago? No, the, my, my real family? Mm-hmm. No, they were all from the East Coast, Atlantic City. Okay, wow. I, I was this, born... I was so you born, were never in Chicago. The whole thing with you was the mistake that you were the child from Chicago, but in reality, you were for always from New Jersey. Yeah, I was actually born in Atlantic City Hospital. Okay. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> this has so many yeah. twists to it. The listeners are probably going, I'm, I've lost track already. <laughs> I, need, I need a PowerPoint, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> all right, so now the family in Chicago, how... So they they never knew what happened to their child. They've never known what happened to their child. Not yet. Correct. Not yet. Which uh, is the parents that raised you. The Franzaks. Yeah. Yeah. Most amazing parents ever. Well, and so how does your how is your mom coping with this? 
You know, we didn't talk for and a long time. And we're talking about the Franzak because right. that is yeah. your mom. Yeah, D- Dora Franzak. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We didn't talk for a long time. And then uh, we 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 decided that it's silly to not talk. And we we, we talk all the time now. Mm-hmm. We, don't talk, we don't talk about the story. Mm-hmm. And I, I don't talk about what I'm doing. Right. But we talk about life and everything else. Does she understand mm-hmm. why you're trying to find? She does. She does. You know, it's, it was so hard on them because first my mom had a stillborn. Then mm-hmm. she had Paul, and Paul was taken. Right. And then they get me back a few years later, and then all of a sudden I'm saying, well, I'm not really Paul. Paul is still out there. You know, so it's, it's, it's like, like we're living it, yeah. living it over and over again. Yeah. Losing that baby one more time. Right. Yeah. It's interesting because we don't realize in our society how often – we have situations. Jan wrote a book called The Secrets of Time, and in her book, the, the secrets in her book that were in a grandfather clock, people would put these messages in this grandfather clock over a period of 147 years, uh-huh. and they were hidden compartments, and one day, one of her characters taps on the clock, and these letters fall out, and there's the secrets of this family, and one of the secrets is is that who you think was your father is not your father. Right. So it's interesting how her book kind of coincides with what you're talking about. But in real life, this goes on all the time. This actually happened in my family. And not to where they were kidnapped, but to where we had, I had hidden cousins that no one knew about because my mother's sister, who was older, had two children. And it was taboo to talk about those two children because she gave them up and nobody knew about them. And it wasn't until her oldest daughter had or her daughter, actually, her da- daughter had her first child that she called my grandparents to tell my grandparents, your grandparents. I'm the one who answered that phone. And when she told me that she was the granddaughter to my, you know, of my grandparents, I'm thinking, how's that possible? I'm, yeah. I'm one of the two oldest. Yeah. You know, my brother and I are the <laughs> oldest. So how is it even possible? And then we found out there was these two children that the father had taken off with when the mother had abandoned them. They were raised in in foster care as well their entire life until they graduated from college and she went on, had a great career. But the point is, is that we never knew about them. We never knew about those two children until she called to say she had her first child. That's crazy. So, you know, it's amazing in society how this is more prevalent than we think. And a lot of it has to do with what you're talking about, like someone just being able to walk in and pick a child up and take them out of the hospital. That's amazing to me. Yeah. Yeah. And ever since I started this, um, I have a a Facebook page, Who is Paul Franzak? And I get tips and information, and I get people just sending me their their stories every single day. And there are thousands and thousands of people out there who have no idea who they are. And they have all these interesting, strange stories. So part of my mission is to not only find Paul and Jill, but also help as many people as I can start their journeys. Yeah. Why do you think... That why do you think people want to find out who the real parents were? You know, there's something inside of us that unless you've been in that situation, you can't feel it. But I've always had this void inside of me telling me that I wasn't who I was raised as. And the way I was, I was always into music and acting and all these things that I wasn't exposed to with the Franzaks. And it turns out that my real cousin... Lenny, who was 2,000 miles away from me my whole life and older than me, was a famous doo-wop singer and an actor in the 50s. So I got to meet him, Uh and I got to play bass in his band in New Jersey. And so we are pre-programmed with so many things about how we are and why we are the way we are. Mm -hmm. And it's unless unless you've been there, you don't know what it's like. And so you have this this built-in feeling where you have to search and find out why you are and who you are the way you are. It's interesting because I I always wonder, though, why do you have that desire to find someone? I'm going to share this. I've never shared this. This is the first time I'm sharing this. I don't know who my real father is. I mean, I kind of do know who my real father is, but I've never had the desire to seek out that person. Why is that? Yeah. I just feel like that if this person who knew I existed didn't care enough to be a part of my life, why would I want to seek him out? Well, I'm going to give you a secret about stuff like that. The baby you're pregnant with is not the baby you deliver. Once that baby's born, it's not the same one you've been carrying around with. It's, it's a whole different ball game because you, you know that baby that's in you, 
But the baby that you have is somebody different. In what way? You could play with the baby before it's born. You tap your belly, it kicks your foot, you know, and that sort of stuff. And once it's born, you don't have that same connection anymore. And and I really do think that people keep telling themselves constantly, oh, that's my baby, that's my baby, that's my baby. You shouldn't have to tell yourself. You should just know. Well, maybe that's why what we're talking about, you don't have to be blood necessarily to have a parent that loves you and cares for you because right. they're your parent no matter yeah. what the situation was, which I know you had to go through that journey with your parents to, for them to understand. It wasn't about that they weren't your parents because they are. Right. Um, it's just you wanted to find out who your blood relatives were. But I, I will tell you honestly, I, mean, I, love, I love my parents, but I, I never had a connection with them. Like I, I never felt like I was truly part of, of the family. Really? And, and it turns out, you know, like with the first three years of our lives really set the tone for the rest of your life. Yeah. By the time I was four, I had three identities, lived with th- uh, three different families, and had to adapt to all those different situations. So by the time I became Paul... I was pretty much set on just doing what I had to to adapt, to fit in, and to make it to another day. And that's the way I've always been. I've, I've had over a, probably 200 jobs in my life, um, a, a few marriages. You know, I just I can, I can pick up and walk away from any situation and not look back. And I think it's really, it's, it started from having to adapt and become different people for different people. So you think that yeah. set the pattern for why you do that, I, I for do. why you, you change stuff, for why you, you have a new wife or whatever. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's easy for you to walk away. Absolutely, yeah. That's an interesting s- scenario as well. Huh. It's crazy. Well, yeah. if you've never been connected, you don't miss being connected. It's a good point. And you starting it, it's and it's it falls fall, it spills over not just in the family, but in your career and everything else that you do. Yeah. Cuz so the, this one doesn't work out, psst, there'll be another one. That one doesn't work out, yeah, there'll be another one. So you just think short term, really? I, once again, I think it's just it's just adapting. You know, yeah. it's if situation is, isn't where where you want to be, you can just leave and find another situation. Right. Yeah, but don't you? In but I would think that you would want to find that comfort zone, that you would want to find that place where you could settle down and realize this is going to be the rest of my life. Because you, I, I think having gone through all that. I would think that would be tiresome. That I would, I you know, I, I understand why you want to find Paul now. That I get. I think to me, I don't know why exactly, but I would think you would want to find Paul to comfort your mother. Absolutely. Um, and I think that would be the reasoning for that. Uh, also, closure. Well, and closure. That really mm-hmm. means you really aren't Paul. Well, well he already knows he's could, not Paul. I, I never even even felt like Paul. Even be, even being called Paul my whole life, I never it never felt right to me. And I was I was born Jack. I was um, I was living as Scott McKinley, and then I became Paul. And out of those three names, Paul is the least one that I like. <laughs> I mean, honestly, <laughs> I mean, I like Jack. Scott's pretty cool, you know. But Paul, I never felt like a Paul. I know it's crazy, huh? Yeah. yeah. Hey, my middle name's Pauline. <laughs> Back that's, off. That's a good name. <laughs> yeah, now it's a good name. It's a good name. <laughs> <laughs> so, what do you think of all this craziness, Emily? Do you feel, are you glad you know who you are? Yeah. Are you glad you don't have to search for who you might be? Yeah. Yeah. Because <laughs> it's crazy, huh? Yeah, very crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So how has it affected, well, obviously this affected your relationship as well. Or did it? My, my marriage? Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm no longer with, with Emma's mom. Mm-hmm. You know, but we're, we're, we're like best friends now. Okay, but that's good. Yeah, but it, good. It, it wasn't just it wasn't just the, the journey I was on, but it didn't help things. So it's part know, of I, what you said about being able to settle down and you like to to constantly change things. I, I do, yeah, yeah. I, I do. I, I, I'm I, I think I'm a restless soul. You know, I like mm-hmm. to just keep moving on to the next thing, and I'm not going to stop until I find Paul and Jill. And it's okay. I have Paul's birth certificate. I also have my. How re- do you have? Oh, yeah, Paul's birth certificate. But I also have my own, Jack's. Okay. So I want to find Paul, hand him his birth certificate, and then just move on from there. Why why does the FBI think someone took Paul? Just because there was no real reason. It's just this woman was wandering through the hospital for two days and 
You know, I mean. Well, it's I mean, it's, it's either she wanted a baby of her own. She was selling babies black market. Okay, that's uh-huh. probably a very big possibility. Or she was just crazy, you know. But if she was, if she was, it sounds like someone who was there for two days was scouting. To me, oh, that's absolutely. what it sounds like. Right. And if she was scouting the hospital for two days, and she did, they did take Paul, which obviously she did. Um, if if that baby was sold on the black market, that's going to be almost impossible for someone to find that child. Well, you know, impossible is not really a word I like to, to okay. deal with. Right. You know what yeah. I mean? I, I've, we've, we've overcome so many challenges in the, in the last... Well, yeah. Think start, about started it, yeah. in 2012. I didn't find out my real identity until 2015. So that, that took three years right there. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, and we have a lot of tips that we're working on right now. Uh, we're in talks with a, a possible TV show. And mm-hmm. so we haven't really done anything new for the last almost year because everyone wants us to wait until we get some sort of show lined up and then move forward because, of course, everyone wants to get it on film, what we do next. Sure. But we have so many things that we, we've we got bodies to exhume. We have people to talk to. Well, how is George Knapp figuring into this? Because I know I, I, the first time I heard about this was with you on the, a local show with George Knapp, who's a local reporter. Right. And it seems like he was helping investigate to some extreme. George is the most amazing reporter. I have the most respect for George. When this first happened, so I found out that I wasn't Paul. Right. From Identigene, the DNA company. And it was Saturday Saturday morning, and I thought, okay, I need to I need to do the next step. Best thing I can do, I thought of one person, George Knapp. Uh-huh. George Knapp was into conspiracies, mm-hmm. yeah. aliens, yeah. Area 51. Yeah. I'm an X-File. Yeah. I have three X-Files tattoos. <laughs> right? I mean, the, ah. so I sent George a brief email on a Saturday. <laughs> Fifteen minutes later, he got back to me, I want to meet you. And because of George Knapp, we ended up doing stories together. Um, we ended up doing Barbara Walters because he actually helped me get to New York and everything. Uh, George, George, he's, he's a great guy to work with. And mm-hmm. he's, he's like the old school, hard, hard nosed reporter. Like he actually knocks on doors and walks the streets and gets answers. Yeah. You know, he, I, I love yeah. that guy. Yeah. 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 So he's actually helped you quite a bit. And as far as uncovering what you need to find out, he, we, I still talk to him today. Like, um, the coast to coast radio, he had me on three times already. Yeah. And I love that program. Yeah. George isn't here anymore. No, he's still here. Oh, okay. Yeah. He's just doing coast to coast is what he's saying. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. 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 Oh, okay. Well, so, what do you have any questions? <laughs> <laughs> have you ever well, asked your dad why he's doing this? Why are you doing this? <laughs> She's asking you now. now. I'm doing this for you. Why? Because I love you. Love you too. <laughs> well, you know, it is a part of her legacy, too, really. Yeah. That's to right. To find out who her, you know, who her father is. Um, yeah. it, it's kind of like what I was saying. I, I have no desire to know who my father is. I mean, I do know who my father is, but I don't have any desire to know that person. Well, so what really happened was, for a long time, I wanted to find out for sure if I was really Paul or not. But when, once I had Emma, and the doctor asked me one day, what's your medical background history? Mm-hmm. I spotted off the usual spiel that I do. But then I really started thinking, is this really my medical history? Yeah, no. Am I really a Franzac? Right. And I was thinking about Emma, and you know, am I doing her an injustice by not knowing my future medically? Right, right. That's for true her. Too. Yeah. So that really got me thinking that I should really do something and start this journey. Mm-hmm. Now, the Franzacs, they have other children? Uh, Dave. Okay. Yeah. So you have a brother? Yeah, it was, they're biological. Yeah, Dave was really their son. And so from DNA testing from him, they might be able to find Paul. Yeah, I, I have DNA in all, all the DNA databases. Okay, now I'm confused. You've confused me just now. Okay. Is Dave someone you grew up with? Yeah. yeah. Okay. They, 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 um, they had Dave right when I was found. Okay. Wow. So my, my, my mom says she was overwhelmed with the fact of, you know, was I really Paul? She had a new child, Dave. They just moved into a house in the suburbs in Chicago, and all this happened at once. And my mom was just overwhelmed. I can imagine. Yeah. Did you ever feel close to Dave? No. No. So you really always thought you were never brothers. Right. Do you resemble each other? No, not at all. He <laughs> looks exactly like my dad. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Huh. Interesting. Yeah. Oh. Uh, I have a friend that was uh found out he was adopted when he was thirty seven years old. And his and he found out uh when his mom passed away. Uh, they were cleaning out her house. Her, his dad had passed away years before, and they were cleaning out the house, and he found his adoption papers. Wow. And he went looking for his real mom. It took him about three years, found her, knocked on her door, 
And she said to him, you were a one-night stand. Don't ever come back. I don't want to know about you. I don't want to know about anything else. Now, as hard as that is, at least he knows the truth. Well, he went you know? home and committed suicide. Okay, that's not good. So that didn't... <laughs> didn't see that coming. Know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm thinking, really? You know? I, I think this is probably why this is an important thing that you're doing. Because yeah. everyone, they do perceive it differently. Yes. You know, um, trying to find out what their identity is. And and that's always a question. I just wrote a book called The Alien Transcripts. And really it deals with a lot of that. Like, who, what is our identity? Who are we? How are we connected? Yeah. Are we connected as one? Um, and I think that's part of what life is, is trying to explore and figure out who we are and why we're here. Sounds like that's really what your journey is about. It, it really is. Um, I think, like, okay, I said earlier that you really can't live a lie because if you live a lie, you're not living at all. Right. And, you know, we are the way we are for a reason. And I think if you don't know who your parents are, I think you're missing out on a lot. Whether it turns out like that, you know, that story, tragic story, or it has a happy ending, at least you know. And to me, once you know, it's easier to move forward with your life. Well, you already know your past was dark. Yeah. I, I How know. old were you, did you say you were, when, they, when your, your, the Franzis found you? Well, I was abandoned in 65. I was almost two years old. Okay. But then there's another two years passed because I was living with a family. Right. So I was, you know, I was almost five years old. How much do you remember? So this is the next step that we're going to do. Okay. I, from what I've read, that our, our mind takes snapshots of everything that we do. Right. Mm -hmm. We just can't have access to it unless you go through hypnotherapy. Yeah. Okay. And that can unleash everything that you've gone through. Mm -hmm. The caveat is that you also relive every emotion associated with that snapshot uh -huh. and a lot of people end up committing suicide right because they can't they can't live with with what they've opened up right they're not right. can't deal with it See, i think i can okay. I'm, I'm ready for it and well so, you already kind of know the history you've been told plus i feel, I feel so disassociated with the, whenever i talk about the story it's always in third person anyway like it's not me mm -hmm. so okay. i, I yeah. think i think i've compart compartmentalized it so well but i still want I, I, I for all i know i could have been there when my parents killed jill True. Oh it's, my it's possible. So True. these are things that we're working on next. Okay. Uh, wow. The story's by no means over. Yo, wow. It doesn't sound like it is. So you've already, you already have someone who's ready, set up to do this for you, to put you under hypnosis. I, I haven't yet. Okay. But I'm, I'm willing to talk to people that do that. All right. Interesting. Hmm. <laughs> You're shaking your head? And your daughter's saying, no. What's wrong? <laughs> no. No. <laughs> 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 I don't know. You know, I would like to kind of refresh some of the memories that I had as a kid that, uh, you know, for, I was very fortunate, had mom and dad and, and four brothers and sisters and, and no disconnect. But, you know, it'd be kind of neat to remember what it was like to be three and four. And Well, I remember from three on. Everything. <laughs> See, it's amazing, right? Yeah. So it, I it, remember That's 65. why I believe in hypnotherapy. I, yeah. I believe that we have the memories. Yeah. We just don't, sometimes we just can't have access to them. Yeah. Sometimes there's reasons why we remember things. Mine was because I basically died on the way to the hospital from an asthma attack. Uh -huh. And from that point, from being in the hospital on, I can remember everything. So, because I remember the nurse, I remember I thought they were mean, they were giving me shots, and, you know, and, you know, my recollection is not what it really was. Like, they weren't being mean to me. They were saving my life, you know. But right. the thing is, is that that's my first memories from there on. Yeah, I think if so. you don't have a trauma or a drama going on in your life, you, you don't remember things because it's all just normal. Right, yeah. You know, it just all one day melts into the next. There's no highs and lows and ups and downs. And then also on, on the flip of the coin, a trauma can have you forget a lot of things. Absolutely. You block it out. Because mm -hmm. yeah. I don't really have any memories until I think I was in like third grade. Yeah. You know, there's a, there's a big time lapse there. Uh, yeah, because yeah. probably your life was traumatic. Right. Up until that point. Yeah. Yeah. It isn't, you know, that's why life is fascinating to me. Um, yeah. And I think we're all on a journey. What, what I, my question in life has always been, what is our journey in life? You know, why do we take, what are, why do we take these pathways? You know, what is this all about? Which is, I guess, what everyone's quest is in life is, what is this all about? Why are we here? Absolutely. Anyone got an answer? <laughs> What's your answer? <laughs> why, why are you here? My mom. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Uh, she's there because of her mom. That's right. Yeah. yeah. So your next step is, so this book is, is going to have a sequel, I assume. 
Yes. Okay. What are some of the secrets you can tell us that's in the book? Don't give everything away. Obviously, you know, there's a lot to it. Um, that why would someone want to read your story? Okay, so I wrote this book like you were actually with me on this journey. Okay. You're actually with me knocking on doors, and you're there for the highs and the lows. So it's just not reading a book. It's actually taking a journey. And that's what I really wanted to accomplish because it is a journey, and mm -hmm. it's a journey that's still unfolding. Mm -hmm. And someone co-wrote this with you, is that correct? Alex Drasnowski. Okay. So how did how was that whole process? Of writing the book? Yes. Did you dictate to him? Did you collaborate with him on writing notes or a journal? or How did that come about? Okay, so I would... I would do something and then immediately either call Alex or he would meet me where I was going or where I was and we would we would capture it right then and there. Okay. Uh, the, right. the experiences like when when I met my my real sister, you know, Alex was there with me. He right. wasn't with me, but he was there. Right. And yeah. then as soon as it happened, I would call him, we would we would dictate, we would get notes and, and give everything. That that's why it seems so fresh in the book because it was still happening. Okay. Yeah. Because I when this first started, I wasn't planning to write a book, All right. but people started contacting me saying, why don't you write a book? You can actually help people. Mm -hmm. So I thought if I can inspire one person to start their journey, then doing a book would be a good thing. Because mm -hmm. I've, always, I've always liked helping people, and so that I, f I figured, let's, let's do a book. And I wanted to do it like a journey, like a roller coaster. How ride. did Alex come into the picture, though, as far as writing the book? All right, so when this, when this first hit, hit the news from George, it went, it went national, like overnight. Mm -hmm. And people like Barbara Walters, uh, Matt Lauer, Anderson Cooper, they were all sending me their packages, and we wanted to watch you on the show, this and that. So Alex just sent me a, a couple of his books that he wrote. And he said, if you ever come to New York, I'd like to meet you. So I went to meet Barbara Walters, and I went to meet uh, another network and all these people, and Alex met me in the hotel. And within 10 minutes, we had a couple of beers, and we talked about Get Shorty. And that was, oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. that was our favorite film. Yeah. So I knew right then, this was the guy I wanted to write a book with. Okay. Uh -huh. And it's, we've been together ever since. Okay. So he, um, he, so it was kind of, in a, in a way, kind of ghostwritten. Right. In a sense. But his name's on the book, so he's co-authored, really. Yeah. Uh, so it's your story told to him from your experiences. But what I do like is, like, a lot of times I've helped a couple of people write their memoirs. They're from journals, whereas yours was actually happening as the book was being written, some of it. Absolutely. When we started the book, we, we had like the only story we had done was the Paul kidnapping. Everything I was doing was still unfolding. Like finding the sister, right. um, Absolutely. the family. Right. Working with C.C. Moore and the DNA detectives. So that's a great way to write this book. Yeah. All those things were unfolding. Yeah. And that's why it's, it's, it's really, it really is a journey. It wasn't me recollecting something. It was me living something. Yeah. That's a lot wow. different than a lot of people have yeah. the the way of writing their book because it's really hard to write it as you go at the moment um, a journal is kind of like that because it's kind of like a diary you would write down what was going on that day and stuff but it may be 15 20 years before you get around to writing it and in your case it was being written as you go before it was published right i always had paper and a pen with me and i always had a, a little recorder and had you uh, ever thought when you were a kid when you were younger once you, you started school had you thought about writing, starting a journal then about your life? I, I really or, didn't know. I didn't know my life then. To me, I was just, I was ra being raised as Paul. You know, it, I didn't really know. I just knew I was, the, when I found the, the, all the clippings in the, in the crawl space, mm -hmm. I, I ran upstairs, yeah. told my mom I was excited. I said, this is about me, right? And she got mad at me because I was snooping around the house. Okay. She said, oh. you were kidnapped. We found you. We love you. That's all you need to know. We'll never talk about this again. And we didn't talk about it, but I never forgot about it. Wow! Yeah, no. where, wherever I moved, all those years, I always kept those clippings with me, and I still have them to this day. It was a huge oh. part of my life. Yeah, I just didn't know why or for how long. I met you wow. about seventeen, eighteen years ago. Yeah, we were going to work on a project together. And what's interesting, when I knew you seventeen years ago, or when I met you seventeen, eighteen years ago, I think it was eighteen years ago. How much of this did you know then? Because you, we never talked about this ever. All I knew was that I was part of a kidnapping from 1964. And you never even shared that? No. It doesn't really come up in conversation, you know? Yeah. Hey, James, how you doing? By the way, I was kidnapped. I, well, I mean, though, I mean, you know, <laughs> it's just interesting. I, I, You know, I can't imagine living all that time knowing this in the back of your mind because it's always there. Right. And you're always, you have to be thinking about it. Yeah. If not on a daily basis, it's at least two or three times a week. It was, it was with me so long that 
for many years, I thought about uh, my parents came to visit me in Vegas and I'll, I'll get some hair samples off the pillow and all that. But but those DNA kits weren't available. And if right. they were, they were so expensive. Yeah. 2012, yeah. I was in CVS. I saw an Identigene kit. It was like $27. So you're I, the one who instigated the DNA test. Oh, yeah. 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 Okay. So I, so I bought the kit and I, I put it in the, in, the, in the cupboard at home. And my parents came to visit us like they always did to see Emily. And they were here for about a week. In uh, two hours before I was taking them to the airport, I said, I just blurted it out, Mom, did you ever really wonder if I was your child? And she said, yeah, we, we thought about it. And I said, well, what if, what if I could find out right now? Would you be interested? And she said, I guess. I ran and got that kit. So at that time, they were okay with it. Because they didn't really understand. It happened so uh-huh. fast. I pulled the kit out. We were swabbing away. I sealed it up, and it was ready to go in five minutes. Uh-huh. I took them to the airport. It was the longest ride of my life because no one said a word. Because now oh, they're yeah. thinking, what have we done? And they, yeah. la- they landed in Chicago. They called me and said, don't do that. We don't want to know. Yeah. So I wrestled with it for a couple of weeks. I had it all ready to go in my desk at home. Mm-hmm. And I thought, you know what? I love my parents. They're asking me not to do it. But I've, I've, I've got something here I've, I've been wondering my whole life. I need to know for sure. You know, yeah. I, I, need to, I need to do this. So I mailed it in. Did you tell them you mailed it in? No. You know, that had to be driving them nuts knowing what did we do. Yeah. Because they don't want to know. They've raised you as their son, and they don't want to know. Right. Um, well, they have closure. Well, they had closure. They had closure. But not he really. Didn't. But not really, because my mom and I really talked about this. My mom actually had a photo album that she kept with her my whole life that she just gave me last year of the family that had me for the year as Scott McKinley. They had all these pictures of me and letters mm-hmm. of my daily routine and everything. And they gave that to my mom. They, they snuck it in the luggage when the FBI took me away. Okay. My mom never told me about that. And then when I visited her before my, my, my father passed away, she gave it to me. So she was hanging out to that her whole life, too. Uh-huh. And we talked about it. And she said, you know what? The world was watching. They put me in a room with you. I, I only spent a few hours with you three and a half, four years earlier. Yeah. And all of a sudden, they're saying, this, this is your this child. This is your baby. So you my, mom, mean- my mom said she could either say, no, it's not. Put me back in the system and, and good luck. Or you very well could be my son. So, yes, this is Paul. If that happened today, it would be a different scenario because of DNA testing. Right. There'll be no question. Yeah. But they had nothing on Paul. Who was Scott McKinley? Scott McKinley was the identity I, I had lived. I know. As It was just a name they, they Oh, they just gave you that yeah, name. Yeah, it was a pretty cool name. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. You know, I was, okay, so I, I, was, um, I was born Jack Rosenthal, mm-hmm. Jewish from Atlantic City. I was living as Scott McKinley, Catholic, in New Jersey, <laughs> and then I was put baptized. Then I was put as Paul Franzak, baptized again, a uh-huh. Polish Catholic. So I'm going to heaven anyway. Oh, yeah, no I, matter I, what, you're covered. covered. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> your foot's in the door. Uh, well, well, you're privileged in many ways. And <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, that's kind of interesting. What happened to the family, the McKinleys? How did they take this and... Had you have you communicated? Well, you obviously have communicated with them since, right? So it was um, it was actually the Eckerts. And oh, the Eckerts. They had they were they were known for having the best foster home in New Jersey. Okay. So um, their daughter Janet was only like twenty years old when this happened. Okay. I got to meet her and spend time with her. We actually through twenty twenty, I got to go into the house that we were living in. Uh huh. And uh-huh. she told me that her parents loved me, and that that they really wanted to adopt me. I was part of the family. Okay. And they were devastated when the FBI showed up and said that's that's of the, the Franzic child from Chicago. And he's going to go back to Chicago. All right, but you can wow. lost me a little bit there. The Eckerts are the are the family that raised you as Scott McKinley. Correct. Why were you giving the name Scott McKinley? McKinley. That's just the name they picked. Who who picked the, the Eckerts? But why wouldn't they have used Eckert Eckert as of opposed McKinley. to McKinley? Because I wasn't being adopted by them. I was just I was placed there from the system. I know, but I'm just confused as to where the name McKinley came from. I guess it was part of um. I guess they had to have a name. You know, to be between <laughs> between the city of uh, New right, Jersey and, yeah. and the Eckers, uh, Scott's a good name. But McKinley, though, but that's, McKinley. The, that's the part that's confusing to yeah. me. Yeah, it's a powerful name. It's a powerful name. <laughs> well, if they um, gave him Smith or Jones or Brown, then he could, you know, be a bajillion different people. Yeah. Yeah, if you have a yeah. question, please. Yeah, please ask the question. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit shy here. <laughs> You'll get over that in time. Trust me. <laughs> <laughs> She's never shy at home. No. You have a question uh, for us? Go ahead. You can ask us. No? All right. Okay. Uh, Jen, you have anything? Uh, I'm, I'm just so blown away by this because I've, when I was about 14 years old is when I first heard about Paul being kidnapped because I had a, a baby sister at the time. And 
my mother was just absolutely, you know, don't anybody steal this baby. So the rest of us kids were responsible for watching her 24-7 so that nobody would take her. And then seeing pieces on 20, 20 years later and remembering, you know, from when I was a kid hearing uh, about this particular story and then learning that you weren't Paul and just wondering from then forward what's happened now. So this is so, uh, this is amazing. I love this. Oh, me too. I, I'm, I'm happy to be here. All Thanks right. for having me. I have a question for you, though. How did it shape your career? Because I've known you as an actor and as a model. And I'm just curious, how did how did that come into the whole, all of this? Because you had a chaotic life even up to the point the Franzics took you in as their, their son. So what was your path? What was what was the, the path you were on? We always are going to be something. The parents always want us to be something. Mine was going to be a teacher. You know, so where where was this path? How did that formulate? Okay, so my parents went as a, a traditional child. Go to, go to a Catholic grammar school, Catholic high school, and then go to college. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. I had a different path because I was into music. I was it was in a band. Okay. So I, I left. I, I graduated from Marist High School, which is a Catholic high school, and I moved to Arizona in a rock and roll band. Okay. <laughs> and then for, I was so I, I did a band thing for a long time, mm-hmm. and then later I got into modeling and acting. Uh-huh. So I've always been into doing things where I don't have to be myself. Okay. Because I really I don't think I really knew who I was. Okay. And I think a lot of that stems from the so first play years of my life. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Right. I oh. I could play somebody else very well. Because I've been doing it my whole life. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Yeah. So you've just stayed with the, the acting and, and the um, uh, modeling has basically been your career financially. But you still always had that desire for music or not? Yeah. I, I still play bass guitar. Yeah. Okay. I, play, I play regular uh, guitar. All right. Um, my, my daughter luckily loves singing and dancing. Okay. So I know she's my daughter. <laughs> <laughs> right? Uh-huh. <laughs> Yeah, but I yeah, know. So, so music and acting and, and, and writing, you know, it's uh, it's always been part of me, and it's it still is today. So, what else are you working on when it comes to writing, or is it just this book? Uh, well, just this book. I've written a screenplay before. I've written commercials and things like that. What's the screenplay? It's it's it was based on something just like a comedy. Okay. You know, but once again, all different characters, right? Because mm-hmm. that's yeah. my whole life—just different characters. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So, where do you think you're? What what pathway are you on now? Are you sticking with the acting, the modeling, or are you venturing out with the singing, or what is what's your path now? Okay. So, my path right now from doing this book and everything I've done with this story is to help other people. I'd like to start a foundation, helping adoptees, people that don't really know who they are, mm-hmm. help them start on their journey, and really live a true life. You know. Whether, mm-hmm. like, you know, what I said, whether it's a happy ending or a sad ending, once you know the ending, mm-hmm. then you can move forward at, at peace. Yep. One of the things I think that, in some ways, you were fortunate that the Franzics did, you know, take you in as their son. Because one of the things I do know, and I'm thinking back to what happened with my cousins, is, is that when you don't know, your, you know, where you're, you know who you're from, but you don't know how to connect with the, that family. It's traumatic for you, and it stays with you your entire life. And I do know that that's what happened to at least one of my cousins, is that, you know, she's always had that why did they abandon me syndrome. And, and I think it stays with you because you're thinking, why wasn't I worthy? Why didn't they keep me? Or, you know, did you ever, any of that ever cross your mind? Uh, from, from doing this whole journey, I am just so thankful that the Franzic said, yes, that's Paul. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, meeting my real sister in Atlantic City, my life could have been really, really tough. Mm. And I had an amazing child. Yeah. So know? that's, yeah. Yeah. So like I said, the Franzix, they saved my life literally. Yeah. And uh, I'm, I am forever grateful. Yeah. Wow. You know, we have a close friend who's adopted. Who's that? Norma Jean. Oh, really? Yeah. That I did not know. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll have to tell you that story someday, uh, too. Okay. Yeah. Very. Yeah, yeah. Well, I find it interesting, and and you know, I you know I hope that whatever it turns out is is good for you, and I know it will be. I mean, how can it go wrong at this point? Even if you find out, um, you know, well, you know who your real parents are. Yes. But hopefully, with Paul, there's something. I know you're Paul, but hopefully, with the real Paul, that we find out something positive out of this. Hopefully, it's not tragic. Yeah, because it, it sounds it, like you're not going to give up on this. I'm not going to give up. I have to find Paul and Jill, and um, I, I would love to find Paul alive. 
because I yeah. think that would be the most amazing gift to give my mom. But you would have thought, though, by now, Paul, <laughs> that the real Paul, <laughs> this is so confusing, <laughs> if it's like who's on first, who's on second, um, the real Paul would have come forward, or maybe he doesn't know. That, it's very it, possible. It, you, know, the, you know, it's funny. The DNA has only been around for a couple of years now. Ancestry, 23andMe, Family Tree DNA, all these companies, they've, they're just still taking off. And yeah. unless you have a reason to, you know, if you're a genealogy buff or you have a reason to, to do your family tree, most people don't do it. I mean, right. I, I, I know a lot of people and maybe 1% have I ever done, you know, ancestry DNA. So Paul could be out there and not be in the system. Because if he was in the system, then the DNA would have traced back to him. Yes. He would have popped up as a, as a match for the DNA that we have from family members. Okay. Yeah. See, and they could have gone to Australia, New Zealand, South America. They could be living anywhere, anywhere in the world. In the world. Yeah, that's right. true, too. And I'm, I'm also prepared for, for the other side, too. And if something tragic happened to Paul, I'm going to find out that as well. Right. Mm -hmm. You know? I mean, there's someone knows something out there. But how is that going to affect your, your mom if, if you find out something had tragically happened to their son? I mean, see, this is the kind of thing I think of. I always think of, I always think of the other people, too. You know, like, what... What is going, maybe that was her fear and you're trying to find out what happened to Paul. Well, you know, the thing is, okay, once again, you know, about you know, living the truth, you know, if, if something bad happened to Paul, then at least my mom will know, but she also knows that she had me and mm -hmm. she raised me her whole life. Yeah. So I'm still Paul, you know, and yeah. it doesn't matter whether it comes out good or bad. She still can't help thinking about it. Right. You know what I mean? I know she thinks about it. You know, what happened to Paul? Yeah, well, you know she's definitely thinking about it. Absolutely. Yeah. Even yeah. when she was raising me as Paul, she had doubts on whether I was Paul or not. Because she knew the secret. She knew the real root thing about you as far as, even if she thought you were Paul, she, she still knew the whole thing about you were talking about with um, being Scott. Being Scott. And, and you said she kept that from you. So those were things she had to live with as well. Right. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. So yeah. she had to constantly be thinking about that as well. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, you know, it's like your, your dog runs away and another dog comes back looking almost like your dog. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you want to believe it's your dog. Right. right. Inside you go, is it really my dog? You know, I'm going to yeah. love it, but I don't really know if it's my dog or not. It reminds right. me of the, the Falkers when the cat got lost and they made it yes. the tip of the tail. <laughs> right. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Well, it Same looks thing. like that, yeah, but it's not. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, it's not quite the same, but... <laughs> but, I mean, it's, you know, it's, it's still part of the family, you know? It's, yeah. I don't know. And in the two years that you were gone, a baby changes so dramatically in that in that period of time. Oh, absolutely. How, and and your, your mom, or the woman who raised you, uh, only saw her baby for how long before it was taken? Not long. Not long yeah. at all. But a couple the ear of hours? Thing, the ear thing is what's interesting because I know that the... That the ear has a specific, it's kind of like a fingerprint. Right. But how would they have mix, messed that up? If, if, if the ear is definitely unique, how could they have messed that process up? Because it was, it was based on the shape of the ear. Paul, even though they, had no, they never blood typed him or had footprints, they had one picture of him. And if you look online, it, that picture is everywhere. And they based, they based the whole thing on the picture of Paul and the shape of his ear. And that, that's that's by no means a science to base something on like that. Yeah, I have two different ears. When I take my headset off, I'll show you. <laughs> well, yeah, because I bet you can't wait. <laughs> yes. No, I mean two completely different shapes. Yeah, but nobody notices. Yeah. Is that the same? It, what, would, what would you like to? Have? How are your ears? Good. <laughs> All right. <laughs> you guess I'm the same. You're my real dad, though, right? Yeah. Ah, uh, yeah. He's yeah. your. As, as a matter yep. of fact, Emma was born in St. Rose Hospital, uh -huh. yeah. and we we had it set up that Emma was was in a room with us, and we didn't leave that room I remember that. until we all left together. Mm -hmm. And anyone that came uh -huh. in to do anything, we had to do. We had them do everything in the room. Uh huh. I wasn't taking any chances no. of something happening to Emma. No. Thank Never. you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we love you a little bit. Uh, <laughs> Very good. Yeah. yeah right. And that would be. That's interesting that you would ask that Emma uh, that. Are you my real dad? Because I, I, you, we do. It's kind of like when we have a death in the family or something's going on, we forget about what the child might be going through. And that's interesting that she asked that question because she sees what you're going through. So you, you, it has to be going through her mind. You know what? What's this like? I was just checking to make sure. I know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I am growing but up. He's assuring you that yes, he is your father. 
I, in growing up, had two older brothers, an older sister, and a younger sister. And when the five of us would get into a scrabble or something, uh, somebody always said, "Well, you were adopted, so you know you don't even count. You're you, you can't vote because you're not even one of us." That's what you know we do to the others. <laughs> Absolutely, happens yeah. all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So you, you know you're really <laughs> my daughter. Let's hope so. Uh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we're cool. running out of time, so I would like to thank Emma. And and now Emma's last name, is it Franzak? It is Franzak. Okay, Franzak. And then Paul Joseph Franzak. And, of course, Jan's our, our co-host here. And, Paul, can you please tell us where we can find your book? Absolutely. If you go to foundlingpaul.com, you can find everything and keep up with the story. Um, I try to update as much as possible with new tips and information. Mm -hmm. And, James, thank you for having me on the show. Oh, you're welcome. Now, your book's also available on Amazon. My book is available everywhere. Everywhere, okay. Yeah, I know. Thank you. Everywhere books are sold. So. And are you yes. glad your dad's doing this? Yes. All right, good. Because it's going to help other people. Yes. Yeah. What a journey. Yeah. Thanks again, wow. Paul. I really appreciate Thank it. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you, Emma. Right. Until next time, this is your host, James Kelly, reminding you if you can dream it, you can write it. Thank you. <laughs>